In this video, I would like to talk about uh, digital PID control design and how we can obtain a functional form or like parametric form for a digital PID controller. Okay, before going to the digital case, let's start with the continuous time PID controller. Okay, so uh, PID controllers ha uh, has been used by control engineers or engineers in general uh, long before uh, digital controllers arrived. Okay, because it's fairly easy to design or at least implement PID controllers using op-amps, capacitors, and inductors, and uh, other kind of uh, uh, analog circuitries. Okay, so what's the basic idea? In uh, time domain, a digital PID controller's action is, let's say, uh, U of T, or let's say C of T, I don't know. Okay, so let's clean it. So output of the PID, okay, let's say C of T, depends on three factors. The error, okay, derivative of the error and integral of the error okay d of t so we multiply error with a proportional gain kp we multiply the derivative of the error with derivative gain kd and integral ki okay so pid control has three parameters and in general it's really hard to uh, tune three different parameters we use different techniques such as like uh, root tokus or uh, I don't know, frequency domain techniques uh, to design KP, KD, KI. There exist some formulas, other kind of heuristics where you can place KP, KD, KI if you design a continuous time PID controller. In Laplace domain, the uh, transfer function of PID has this simple form KP plus KD S plus KI divided by S, okay. So as you can see, we have a pole at the origin, the open pole of the PID transfer function. And if we just distribute everything, the numerator becomes a second order numerator uh, expression. Okay, so this is the basic idea. And the goal is how we can design a digital, okay, PID controller, where input is discrete, okay, G, P, I, D, Z, and output is discrete, but okay. You sh we should still uh, not fact that we still want to control a continuous time plant controller so that there exists a zero order rule here and in general there is a sampling instance at here so how we can design it at these uh, not the parameters but the functional form okay good so okay going on to this okay one method of doing this is called emulation or uh, acting as yes, emulation technique Okay, so what we do is, we start with the form of a continuous time transfer function, okay, so we can even design parameters in continuous time domain, and then we assume that we have a form like this, okay. So what is that? Okay, so G C of C S is a continuous time transfer function, uh, we know that, okay, that's for sure, uh, but we kind of assume that it works in a semi-discrete framework where we have impulse trains and start of those transforms, okay? So what we can do is, we can have a form like this such that we can uh, discretize the output to obtain a different start signal, u star of s. Input is discrete, we don't need that, but uh, we need to make sure that there exists here, okay? So what we can do is, we can have a start GC of S, okay, so what we do, we technically start uh, the uh, continuous transfer function to obtain a start Laplace transfer form, and then we can convert into a discrete time form. This is really an emulation, it's not exactly what we do, okay. So we have a continuous time controller, we assume it, it has a start operation affected on it, okay, and it's a fictitious star operation, and then uh, we can have a start input and start output, which means that we can transform everything in Z domain like this. Okay, as I told you before, this is not exactly what we are doing, but in order to design a discrete time controller, one technique is starting with a continuous time form, uh, continuous time controller transfer function, and emulate it and convert it to, into discrete time. Okay, so in that respect, in emulation technique, GC of Z can be Z transform of g c of s that's it okay and here as you can see there is no zero order halt we can also place zero order halt and 
uh, design an emulation technique using zero to hold, but in general, if you want to use the emulation approach, this is the easiest and most common way of uh, designing your controller. Okay, uh, this is good, and let's uh, do some examples and try to understand what's going on if we start with a continuous time PID controller and move on to a digital PID controller. Okay, so we will start from the uh, simpler case. We can directly start with P. Let's do that. Okay, there's no problem. Okay, let's uh, start with the P controller. Most simple case. Okay, this is KP. That's it, right? Okay, so what we need to do is we need to Z transform of GC of S. Okay, so what we need to do is uh, KP, we need to take the inverse Laplace. Okay, so what is the inverse Laplace of a constant? It is technically impulse. Okay, so GC of T is equal to KP times sigma T. We need to sample it. GC of K is equal to KP times sigma K. We take, need to take the Z transform. So GC of Z is equal to KP. Okay. So this is important, it's not uh, very uh, technically uh, complicated because it's real. If you have a constant Kp, again, if you store it, you always obtain the same thing. Okay, it's one of the things that you need to be careful when dealing with the start operation. Okay, this is easy, and let's uh, design a real controller. Okay, and go with Pi action, which is more important. Okay, let's good. Let's now design a digital PI controller by emulating a, a continuous time PI controller. Okay, this is my PI controller. So what should I do is I need to simply take compute GPI Z by taking the Z transform of KP plus KI one over S. Okay. So I know that this is just KP, okay, this is good. This is KI, because it's a Z transform, inverse Laplace transform, they're all linear operators, we just uh, remove the gains outside of the, any kind of operation. And one over S, if you look at the tables, the Z transform one over S, of course, what we do is we take the inverse Laplace, we sample it, then take the Z transform, is simply equal to one over one minus Z to the power minus one. Okay, so let's look at here. Okay, so we converted 1 over s to 1 over 1 minus z to the power minus 1 using the emulation technique. Okay, so do you know what is this? This is accumulator. This is simply summing operation in discrete time domain, which is kind of obvious, right? Because integral is close related with summation, real math sum, we already know it from the calculus classes. So this is not an unexpected result. Okay, of course, in uh, discrete time, approximation or emulation of an integral is simply an accumulation okay so if we make it a, a discrete time transfer function we can manipulate it to obtain like this ki plus kp minus kp z to the power minus one this is one minus z to the power minus one okay or we can write it in a simpler form like this okay z to the power minus 1, 1 minus z to the power of s. Sometimes in discrete time domain, instead of dealing with ki and kp, converting it in a simpler form, which is equivalent, uh, is easier to design your controllers. As you can see, a digital PI controller has two coefficients at the numerator. Okay, one is just constant e of z, one is a delayed version, b1 z to the power minus 1. It can be positive or negative. And at the denumerator you have a single pole where z is equal to 1 and which stands for the accumulation effect or like uh, digital uh, integration effect okay so this is one of the easiest uh, parts of uh, emulating or designing a digital PID control, PI control design okay so in the real life what you can do is if your system permits okay you can design KP and KI just assuming that everything is continuous you can then convert everything into Z domain, okay? So you already know KIAP, B0, B1. You test using simulation and other techniques. If it works, it can be just fine and you can use that controller. Or what you can do is, we already know that function of the digital PI controller, okay, that's good. 
So what we can do is we can tune B0B1 or KIPP directly in the digital domain. Okay, good. So now let's go to a different controller uh, and PID. We already know P and I. Now we need to deal with the uh, D. Okay, so let's remember PID controller form. KP plus KI divided by S plus KD times S. Okay, so the question is, what is the Z transform of S? So if you look at the tables, you will not see that. Okay, and uh, the problem is S is non-causal. Okay, it's not causal. So we cannot technically emulate derivative effect directly using this technique. This uh, technique is called impulse invariance. Okay, so it's not very critical. It's covered in uh, DSP course. This emulation technique is called also impulse invariance. The problem is S is non-causal, even in continuous time. And I will talk about that in a uh, 10 minutes or so. But the problem is we cannot emulate S directly in digital domain. So what we can do is we can go to time domain, maybe, okay, and come up with an uh, approximation of derivative. Okay, so x dot of t is equal to dx of t divided by d of t. Okay, so maybe if our sampling times are kind of close enough to each other, what we can do is we can derive uh, approximate with a backward causal difference. Uh, t minus delta t, delta t, okay, so this is an approximation of derivative, okay, this is delta t, and we know that as delta t is smaller, we are, we are closer to being uh, actual derivative, of course, it should be uh, and delta t is going to zero, but if, instead of delta t, if we use just our sampling time, okay, x dot of t can be approximately equal to x t, k t, minus x k minus 1, T divided by t. Why I'm doing it? Because, and this should be kt, okay. When designing a digital controller, all I want is derivative at the sampling instant. Okay, so I can use this approximation. I know t, uh, capital T, okay. I know xk minus 1, I know xkt, I know x dot, I don't know xkt, okay. So I can easily compute that. So the D action, let's say G D of Z, can be simply converted in this form. Okay, 1 minus Z to the power of minus 1. Okay, that's good. That's fine. Okay, uh, if I clean everything, my digital PID controller looks like this. Okay. Okay, and I cannot see that, so let's call it object eraser. Okay, that's good. So if I write my whole digital PID controller, what I will look like this. Okay. G. Okay. G P I D Z is equal to K P plus K I 1 minus D to the power minus 1 plus K D divided by T and 1 minus t to the power minus 1. Okay, as you can see, we have a t here. So, if you design your kp and kd and ki in continuous time domain, you should be careful with the t. If your goal is just to find the form, this is a constant that we want to tune, we can write it like this. It's now with the l, ki, 1 minus t to the power minus 1, plus let's say kd bar, which is kd, 1 minus e to the power minus 1. Okay, so if your goal is to tune your controller directly in digital discrete domain, you can just simply keep it like KB, KI, and KD. That's no problem. Okay, so if we uh, com uh, manipulate this transfer function, PID, see, we can obtain something like this KP plus KD bar plus KI minus kp plus 2kd c to the power minus 1 plus, okay, so I need to clean that, no problem, okay, so let's design it, kd c to the power minus 2, okay, that's good, this is divided by 1 minus c to the power minus 1, okay, or this can be written in this form, b1 c to the power minus 1 plus b2 c to the power 
minus 2 and it goes like this 1 minus t to the power minus 1. Okay, so uh, let's look at this. Denominator is first order and has a pole at 1. Z is equal to 1. Okay, so what is z is equal to 1? z is equal to 1 is associated with the integration or accumulation concept, okay? And it is technically equivalent somehow, and I will talk about this in a couple of weeks, is s equal to 0. Okay, b have a pole at the origin in continuous time domain case is equal to have a pole at 1, z is equal to 1, in discrete time domain, okay? And as you can see, numerator is a second order uh, operation in uh, technically it is a second order polynomial which is very close to what we obtain in a continuous domain case okay so overall as you can see a digital pid controller and continuous pid control has a similar form right okay so they all have a pole at the origin or one which is equivalent and they have two second order transfer functions b0 b1 and b2 okay uh, now the point is okay by doing this, what kind of behavior I obtain? Okay, so I can can I really simulate the behavior of a continuous time PID controller, the same actions, because we know that KP is very common, it's intuitive. AI technically uh, removes the state state error. D has a like feature prediction and stabilization effect. We generally it generally improves the uh, transient performance, but of course there are uh, other details based on the uh, behavior of the plant transfer function. Okay, so what we can do is we cannot compare direct using coefficients or time domain behavior, but the good thing is in frequency domain, if we plot border plots or uh, Nyquist plots or polar plots, uh, we can directly compare qualitative behavior to functional behavior of two transfer functions. Okay, in uh, frequency domain, in general, we can really compare continuous time and digital time control systems. Okay, so this is a continuous time PID controllers, like plot. Okay, it's very simple. Okay, as you can see, it is a line. Okay, this is zero. Uh, that is parallel to the imaginary axis, but of course there's an offset here. Okay, and this is equal to KP. That's very easy. Okay, this is a continuous time PID controller. If we draw the polar plot of a digital PID controller, we obtain a substantial different behavior, okay? So at low frequencies and high frequencies, they're very similar. Okay, low frequencies, high frequency, continuous time PID, discrete time PID is almost equivalent, but in the medium frequencies, and it's even like questionable, what's the medium frequency? It depends on system to system. You have a substantially different behavior as you can see here instead of a single line you have a like circle like curvature here you have a circulation and it goes like this so the basic idea is, since we approximated a non-causal term s with a, a discrete time approximation or a numerical approximation okay and we end up in having like this okay x k plus one x oh well, let's say let's make it causal okay since b technically uh, converted into, let's say, this was KDS, now we have KD, 1 minus e to the power minus 1, okay? So they look similar, but they're significantly different, as you can see, because this is causal, but this is non-causal, and uh, when you have a causal, you have some sort of uh, dynamical responses that you may not expect with a non-causal transfer function. Okay, so it's an expected result. But the problem is, okay, so this is good. And the good thing is you can implement this exactly if you uh, ignore the like quantization or, and other kind of effects in a control system. But the problem with the continuous time PID controller is it's not even possible to design a perfect continuous time PID controller if you do not directly measure derivative of an output. It can be your measurement, for example, if it's position y of t, you may measure it directly here, okay? Of course, you shouldn't do any filtering or any kind of things, that it can be closer to a, a exact continuous time PID controller, but it technically, uh, implementing this directly in your control block is not possible because derivative is non causal. We use it, we technically implement this in. Uh, our 
uh, three or two classes because of it's easier to talk about PID when uh, D is non causal. Uh, but and somehow, if you have a higher order transfer function, D can be embedded in terms of the uh, transfer function structure, or sometimes you can directly measure. D, and it's fine, we can also do the same thing with the digital uh, PID controller. Okay, but now what we can do is, now let's approximate KD as, okay, with a causal approximation. Okay, uh, so what is this? So we will still try to use a continuous time transfer function, which approximates the behavior of a derivative in transfer function domain. So what we do is, KDS is approximately equal to KD S gamma S plus 1, where gamma is a very, very small number. Okay, if you keep gamma small and gamma is approximately equal to 0, but gamma is uh, greater than uh, 0, okay, but it's very tiny. If gamma is tiny, as you can see, we kind of ignore this. Of course, when S is like uh, very small, we can ignore that. Uh, but when S is high, we cannot ignore that. It's one of the uh, critical thing. But technically, we can do such an approximation. We can up update our GPIDS, which is an approximate. It's a causal continuous time PID. And let's look at the result. Okay, so this is continuous time PID, digital time PID. And this is con causal continuous time PID, where we approximate the action with a causal counterpart. As you can see now, this is quite different than this and this. These are both causal actions. Okay, so I didn't pick the parameters carefully. Okay, so by changing parameters, you can change the behavior. But the good thing is, actually, causal continuous time PID control that you can really implement in your system is functional equivalent to discrete time PID controller in frequency domain. Okay, uh, for that reason, if you want to design a continuous time PID controller and emulate it in a uh, digital domain, what you do is, if you design a continuous time PID using S as your actual S, non-causal S, it will generally not work. But if you design a causal continuous time PID controller where you approximate S with S uh, gamma S plus 1 or something like this, then you can obtain a good transient performance, maybe not as good as this, but a good thing is at this, when you emulate this, you will get an okay or expected result in terms of performance. Okay, good. Now I will talk about something else. Okay, so what is here? Good. Okay, so we talked about approximating S with a causal counterpart. Sometimes one of the problems in both uh, digital and continuous domain is, okay, so let's go to the PI controller, okay. So GC of S, KPE plus KIS, okay. So the integral effect here removes the steady state error or technically, uh, categorically improves steady state performance. But one or S is generally, as you can remember, disturbs the stability and transient performance of the system. And practically, since 1RS is a simple integration, uh, th this multiplication in time domain, let's say G, C of T, K, P, E of T, let's say, plus K, I, E of T, E, T, this integral can be dangerously high because it's uncontrolled integration. When there is a disturbance and a kind of attacks, it can reach levels that can harm the system because you are feeding this to your uh, actuator. It can be torque, it can voltage or current, it can damage your system, or you can uh, technically hit some of the thresholds that you can apply. For example, in general, there is a uh, torque limitation or current limitation in your system. So uh, in most cases, not say, okay, it's, uh, in many cases, People generally don't directly apply API controller, both in digital and continuous domain. Instead, what they do is they implement a leaky integrator. Okay, leaky integrator is this. G P I leaky is equal to K P plus K I 1 over S plus alpha. So this is not an integration, right? But if you keep alpha, which is greater than zero, but approximately equal to zero, 
it can somehow simulate the effects, emulate the effects of integration with an uh, bound because this is now a first order transfer function. We know that if you apply a constant input, it will be output will be constant as opposed to real integration. And uh, it will not eliminate the state state error categorically, but it will improve your state state error uh, because it will be able to uh, use higher gains with the structure. Okay, so uh, it will technically deviate from the PI action. So it's not exactly PI, but it's close to PI. Okay, so if we do that, our transfer function will have this form S plus alpha plus KI divided by KP 1 or S plus alpha. Okay, good. So if you look at this, this is technically a compensator structure. Okay, it's technically a lag compensator. Okay, and I, uh, if you remember, I talked about this a little bit uh, in a trio to class. So a uh, integrator PI controller, if you just uh, change your PI control such that it has a like, uh, limit uh, in a discrete domain, we look like a lag compensator and we know that we can adjust the state of the uh, error uh, in a lag compensator by uh, manipulating gains and uh, alpha. Okay, good. So what we can do is, okay, so this is nice. Uh, let's go back to this. Uh, we can transform this, okay. Uh, let's do that. Okay, this is good. This is no problem. Okay. Okay, yes, that's good. So let's clean everything. Object eraser. Okay. So this is behind. So what we can do is now let's emulate a leaky integrator and see what we have here. G leaky PIZ is the Z transform of G leaky PIS. Okay, this is equal to KP plus KI. Okay, Z transform of 1 over S plus alpha. I think it's that. Okay, it's true. It should be true. Okay, that's good. So if I convert everything, this is equal to KP plus KI 1 minus E to the power minus alpha T C to the power minus 1. Okay, so uh, the important thing here is alpha is small. Okay, it's close to 0. So what we can do is this can be equal to KP plus KI 1 minus beta c to the power minus 1. Here the idea is beta is less than 1, but beta is close to 1. As you can see, what we obtain is a different digital PI controller than original design. So in the digital PI controller, we used to have 1 here, but now we have a, a coefficient which is smaller than 1, but close to 1. It's not exactly an accumulation, but it's near accumulation with some leakage or damping in the system. Okay, good. So what we can do is we can convert it into a, a transfer function form, which is somewhat easier to understand. 1 plus a1 c to the power minus 1. As you can see, it do, we have a first order structure, both in numerator and denominator. Okay, we have three coefficients, and this is technically a digital lag compensator. Okay? Or digital compensator, if you change a, it depends, it can be close to lag or uh, it can be lead if you care to choose B0, B1, A1. Okay, so the basic idea is when you go to the digital domain and you, when you talk about digital PID controllers, okay, so you technically closer to lead and lag compensator in continuous domain, domain than uh, actual PID controllers. First of all, we cannot apply D action even in continuous time domain case and uh, unless some specific cases, okay. Uh, and in general, even in continuous domain, because I'm uh, working with people in the industry who are designing controllers, they generally don't direct into integration. They add some sort of leakage and other kind of like effects, which uh, technically eliminates accumulation, unstable accumulation. So what you obtain is in the digital domain, if you imply you have controller, it will look more like a uh, digital lead or lag or leak lag compensator. Okay, so I will show some border plots. Okay, so this is a PI controller. This is a leaky PI controller. 
Okay, as you can see, at high frequencies, they are exactly the same. In medium frequencies, they are somewhat different, but low frequencies, they are quite different, okay, at very low frequencies. Okay, so uh, PI controllers, this like uh, extreme effect, which is kind of, as you can see, unbounded to goes to infinity, minus 90 degrees, it can categorically eliminate steady state errors or like improve steady state performance. However, we can still use the gain effect at low frequencies of the leaky PI, which is a like compensator, also adjust uh, steady state performance. Okay, good. So I will show you something else. Okay, so which is digital PI and digital leaky PI. As you can see, the picture is same. When you add a leakage, you will have same behavior approximate the middle to high frequencies, but you will obtain a substantially different behavior at low frequencies. So this picture is nice. Okay, this is actual PI, digital digital PI we obtain using the emulation technique. As you can see, they are very close to each other. This is leaky PI. This is digital leaky PI. As you can see, they are very close uh, to each other in terms of frequency response functions. Okay, so uh, the basic idea of this lecture is not uh, teaching the like uh, important topics about digital control design. I want to talk about the similarities and differences between digital controllers, continuous time controllers, basically in the context of PI, PID, and what happens if we approximate derivative action in continuous domain and digital domain, what kind of behavior you obtain, and uh, what kind of differences we uh, obtain in uh, digital and continuous domain cases.